The following is a CPA exam question, all right? So it's the idea of combined financial statements, and it's just one of these things. It's special transactions or special reporting section of financial reporting. It's just a quick item to know. Combined financial statements are sometimes prepared even though no one company owns the majority of stock of all the companies that are being presented. Sometimes you just have sister companies that are related to each other in some way, but one does not own the other. And it just happens to be that one person owns three different companies. They do business together and they tend to sometimes send money back and forth and they cooperate and it makes sense for them to present as one company. So these are called combined financial statements. And what will happen is, it says here, an individual owns or controls multiple companies or a parent company prepares financial statements that only include its subsidiaries, but it doesn't even include the parent. Or it treats its subsidiaries in groups so it chooses to prepare a set of financial statements for a group of its subsidiaries, a select group that happen to be related with each other. So you can really take, pick and choose between all your different subsidiaries, pick several subsidiaries that sort of work together and prepare a combined financial statements for them. Um, I'll often see this and I do a lot of work in not-for-profit organizations and I'll see two not-for-profit organizations that cooperate one doesn't own the other but they cooperate and they often cooperate on different projects and they have the same board so it makes sense to just present them as a single set of financial statements but the exact ownership structure because they're not for profits th does not necessarily exist so what you're going to do is you can kind of combine these as if they're consolidated, but you're not going to have, you probably don't have an investment in between them. So well, the consolidation we did had dividends back and forth. It had an investment. These are usually not going to have that, but rather what you're going to do is you're going to have stockholders equity of two different companies, which will be presented separately. Now, sometimes you're going to have intercompany payables and receivables. That would be a situation where um, one entity owes the other entity money. So one has a receivable, the other one has a corresponding payable. They better be for the same amount of money and you're going to eliminate them against each other. You may also have situations where one entity sold products to another entity and recorded a profit. That profit needs to be eliminated because the entities are related to each other and you're not allowed to record profit on on transactions between entities like that. So if two entities are owned by the same person, if one entity sells to the other, then they're not allowed to record profit until they sell to an outside party. So there's various different kind of intercompany relationships that need to be eliminated when you do the combination. Here you go, CPA question. Which of the following statements is true regarding combined financial statements? Parent company is always included in combined financial statements. Companies included in combined financial statements simultaneously own a majority of each other's stock. That's possible, by the way. Combined financial statements combine the financial statements of a group of companies that have the same owner. All intercompany transactions remain in the accounts of combined financial statements. The answer is C. Because the parent company is not always included in financial statements, by definition, if it was, then that would be consolidated financial statements. And when I'm talking about consolidated here, we're talking about combined. Companies including combined financial statements simultaneously own a majority of each other stock. It's possible, believe it or not, that, that does happen. Where you have two companies and one owns the stock in the other and the other owns the stock in the one. So it's very confusing. I don't know why you would do that. But it does happen. It's sort of, it's, I don't know why, but it happens. And um, in that's, that doesn't mean that you need to combine your financial statements. And you have combined financial statements, I'm sure, where that doesn't happen. 
And D, all intercompany transactions remaining in the accounts and combined financial statements. That's absolutely not true because you always have to eliminate those.